Hello and welcome everyone, this is Mr. Umath again and today we want to have a look at the Riemann functional equation again and this is another way of writing down the Riemann functional equation and um, it is more precisely another way to write down the zeta function itself. Now let's have a look at this monster, okay, this is <laughs> zeta of s is equal to 2 to the s pi to the s minus 1 sine of pi s over 2 gamma of 1 minus s and zeta of 1 minus s. So um, actually if you look at this kind of uh, combination sine and gamma this should remind you somehow of uh, the Euler reflection formula and this guy 2 to the s and some pi in there uh, it could remind you uh, to the Riemann functional equation we have this um, zeta also so it's a little bit mixed and uh, let's first look at our three ingredients that we need to solve this little puzzle okay this little mathematical puzzle so first we have the uh, Riemann functional equation we proved this in the previous video so you should actually know what we did to arrive here actually we did first uh, replace s by s halves then we used the substitution with pi n squared t uh, or x I used x as uh, the variable of integration then we used a lot of uh, integration rules and we used uh, the property of the Jacobi theta function to arrive finally at this point okay this is the first ingredient that we will need the second ingredient is this formula it should remind you of the Legendre duplication formula and this is actually nothing else but replacing um, s by s over 2 in the Legendre duplication formula and rewriting it in this way and the uh, third ingredient that we will be needing is the reflection formula of Euler again a little bit of changing you see a cosine appearing instead of a sine but we will show these ingredients these two ingredients uh, in more detail on the next slides so we start off with the Legendre duplication formula this should be familiar to you so nothing special about it now what we do is we replace um, s by s over 2 and let's see what happens so we have 2 or, or I go down here we have 2 multiplied with s over 2 so the 2 will cancel and here we get s to the 2 s half so th this 2 will also cancel minus 1 square of pi gamma of s halves plus s halves plus 1 so let's just sort things out we get here gamma of s this is 2 to the s minus 1 and here in the right hand gamma term we just put them together and write s plus 1 over 2 now the final step that I'm doing is I'm just uh, bringing these both terms so 2 to the s minus 1 down here into the denominator and square root of pi I multiply with the square root of pi so we'll, it, it will land in the um, denominator of this uh, fraction here on the right hand side we are left with this guy now this was the first step let's have a look at the second ingredient this was um, looking similar to this but again we use a little substitution we substitute s by s plus 1 over 2 and we we could also write this as s halves plus 1 half I know you can uh, imagine that this can be uh, broken up into two fractions but I just want it to be clear because we will need it somewhere so first of all I replace s by this guy here and I replace this s by the same thing so we get a 1 minus s plus 1 over 2 here we get pi sine and this is where I use this uh, breaking up procedure so I will get sine pi s halves plus pi half so just multiply this s instead of using this s just use this s halves plus one half and you will arrive at this formula and um, if you are known a little bit about if you know a little bit about trigonometric functions then you know that pi halves 
sine of pi halves plus or minus something is always the cosine of this something. Okay, this is the only thing that I'm using for the next step. So cosine of pi s over 2 and uh, in the left hand side I'm just um, using uh, same denominators so 2 halves 2 halves minus s plus 1 but will, will become minus 1 so we have 1 minus s over half so th this kind of symmetric representation that we will be needing that was on the first or second slide here now let's continue so we we have now shown both the ingredients that we need for our proof so let's start off with a Riemann functional equation what I will be doing is um, first of all I will be multiplying in something okay did you notice what I multiplied in yes I multiplied in gamma s plus 1 over 2 okay gamma s plus 1 over 2 this is what I multiply into this function and I write it here because of some reasons because now we can use the Legendre duplication formula on this guy or better the the modified uh, Legendre duplication formula here so gamma of s half multiplied with gamma s plus 1 over 2 will just become this guy and on the right hand side we will use the Euler reflection formula which is also not in the pure case but in the modified case where we replaced s by s plus 1 over 2 and you will have this pi over cosine pi s 2. Now the rest is pretty pretty simple so and, and not oh sorry just <laughs> it just went too fast so the rest isn't too too hard so the only things that we need to do is we multiply this cosine pi s over 2 to the left hand side we uh, multiply with pi to the 1 minus s halves so it will combine combine to this guy and we also divide by pi bring it to the other side and what you should see is this kind of representation I just it's it's a little bit of mathematics but uh, not worth going more into the details so I'll just leave it up to you to to really go ahead and calculate it but as I told you it's not that hard now this is not where we want to stop because uh, if you remember in the first slide that we had we had something like the sign in here so let's have a look how can we get the sign the thing that you have to do is you have to replace nothing else but 1 minus s with s so what happens we get gum uh, sorry zeta of s because we replace 1 minus s with s we get 2 over 2 pi 1 minus s cosine of pi 1 minus s halves and here we get gamma of 1 minus s zeta 1 minus s so uh, if you remember from the first slide then we should now the the only difference is that here we have to have a sign how can we get this uh, in order to to get that is it's pretty simple again it's cosine pi minus pi s over 2 and then you can again use uh, this kind of complementary formula for sine and cosine and you will have the sine in here then rewriting this stuff a little bit is uh, also very very simple this is 2 to the 1 minus s you see that uh, 2 to the 1 and this 2 can cancel so we have 1 over 2 to the minus s multiplied with pi to the 1 minus s and if you change their position in the fraction bring them up it will be 2 to the s pi to the s minus 1 so just uh, rearranging them in, in the other order and you have finally arrived at the last statement which is um, this kind of guy here you see the sign and so forth but here is the more comprehensive kind of formula this is a very powerful uh, formula set that we have now that uh, zeta of 1 minus s is equal to 2 over 2 pi in brackets to the power to the uh, s multiplied with cosine pi s over 2 gamma s zeta s and even better we can replace this guy uh, zeta of s by 2 s pi s minus 1 sine pi s over 2 gamma 1 minus s zeta 1 minus 
ass okay and this actually concludes this video i hope you had a lot of fun and actually the next two slides uh, the next two uh, not slides but the next two videos uh, will be about the trivial zeros of the zeta function which is pretty easy to uh, see from this formula we will go ahead and try to do that and uh, then in the next step I will talk a little bit about Riemann's psi function and uh, we will come even closer to the Riemann hypothesis and you will feel where um, it somehow arises from these equations where we actually have no uh, one half plus it so the the critical line is not uh, hidden somewhere here or better it's hidden somewhere here but uh, we we won't see it that obviously like we will see in the later videos okay so like always if you have uh, questions um, comments please use the comments function of youtube and if you like this video please give thumbs up and i hope to see you guys soon in a new video okay thank you guys